Government officials in Russia have been experimenting with cloud seeding for years as a way to manipulate the weather. For example, the mayor of Moscow says the cleanup of heavy snow is too expensive, so he wants to displace winter snow to the surrounding towns. But what are the dangers of trying to control the weather? Joining us now is Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill, first let's start with what is cloud seeding? Well, clouds form uh, with water droplets on particles of dust. Without dust, or, uh, or particles of salt blown up from the sea that evaporate off the sea surface. Without those dust or salt particles, you wouldn't have clouds and you wouldn't have rain. So the idea is, let's disperse our own particles on top of the clouds and the rain droplets will form or the snowflakes will form and then we can control where it rains. But it's a very difficult problem. Can you use, like the mayor of Moscow wants to, use cloud seeding to push snow out of town A into town B? Well, that's the idea, that you would, you would seed the clouds upwind of Moscow. Now, Moscow is about 1,000 square kilometers, about 400 square miles. So if you have a centimeter of snow, half an inch of snow, you've got about 10 million tons of rain, of water. 10 million tons. It's a very difficult thing to control. And by the way, the Russians, in their creative manner, <laughs> are using not silver iodide particles, which is an old trick, not dry ice, but, piece, uh, but particles of cement. Right. 500 if... grade cement, which is very fine, like flour kind of cement. And so you're pouring cement on top of the clouds to make 10 million tons of rain come out. I mean, it's a difficult thing. And in fact, they didn't want rain during a national holiday last year, so they were throwing that cement up. And apparently, something happened in the clouds, and a chunk of cement fell out of the sky onto a Muscovite's house. So there are some risks. Can you talk about the risks? Well, this is, I think that's probably people in the plane not being disciplined with their bag opening. I'm speculating. But the, uh, the idea is, remember, it rains. If somebody says there's a 70% chance of rain, it means there's a 30% chance that it won't rain. Well, 30%, that's going to happen. So scientists can make claims based on one or two events that really aren't proof or disproof of cloud seeding. Just the idea of cloud seeding is intuitive. It seems like it should work. But it's the scale of it, the size of it, that makes it so difficult. Do so that they drop cement on somebody's house is just... <laughs> It's unfortunate. I'm glad nobody was hurt. Right. Definitely unfortunate for that person. Do we do cloud seeding in the U.S.? Oh, people have tried it. People have tried it for many years, and uh, they've tried it in ski areas. You know, I've uh, spent some time in the mountains uh, in the Pacific Northwest, and I've seen situations where clouds are, it's raining or snowing on like a, a swath about a football field wide, and then the clouds on either side are unaffected. It's not snowing or raining in those clouds. And so people at ski areas have thought, well, if we could just get it to, to snow, just right down this one ribbon of ski of uh, ski slope, they would have some economic advantage. But it's a very, very difficult thing to do. You, got, you have to get so many particles into the air at just the right time, and the clouds have to behave just the way you want. You know, the, the idea is that if it starts raining in one part of the cloud, the whole thing will start raining. But I can tell you from experience that that's not how it works. All right, Bill Nye, the science guy, thank you for joining us today. Thank you.